and country. In first proposition, from the University College Court Philosophical Society, is Mr. John Beecher and Mr. Sean Butler. <laughs> <laughs> in first opposition, from the University of London Union, is Mr. Carlo Cabrera and Mr. Mika Beekman. <laughs> in second proposition, from Tel Aviv University, Mr. Omar Eagle and Mr. Salani. <laughs> Mr. Thomas Ball and Mr. Benjamin Doe. Speech of the floor for seven minutes, a very festive look. And I'd like to invite the Prime Minister, Mr. John Beecher, to open the case of Sands and Jane. conscientious objector, any person themselves being a pacifist, and why all of you in this room should choose that choice, why none of you should buy into the idea that there is somewhere to go fighting elsewhere. As a caveat, we would say that we only believe in self-defense to the point of view of maybe defending yourself like as a person. We don't believe in the idea of fighting for states. We don't believe in the idea of fighting especially externally, and I think externally is the massive problem within this debate. What am I going to talk to you about? The first point I'm going to tell you is why it's morally wrong to take life, why war is essentially morally wrong and no one should ever be a part of it. Then I'm going to tell you why it's just logically wrong for any of you here to sign up for a war, so, why probably it's not in your best interest. And also I'm going to add to that my third point, why there is no duty to fight for your state, why just being born here does not put an imposition on you to risk your life, your own personal experiences. Okay, to start my first point, the idea of the moral framework. First of all, what we put to you on side proposition here is that I cannot preface my life in front of another's. I cannot put myself in another person's country and decide I am more important to them. I cannot put myself in a position where others are ordering me to kill somebody. Why is that? Because I don't think there is anything that they can say on opposition that says that my life is more important than theirs. We believe in the constancy of human life as an ideal. We think in the same way that I wouldn't want somebody coming over here and shooting at me is probably maybe a good enough reason for that. But even if you look at the idea of human life, you need, like every person you kill is a unique person. They have their own livelihood, they have their own universe essentially. They have their own unique subjective experience of what they have done, what, who they have loved, what they have experienced. When you destroy that, you have destroyed the entire world of someone's experience, someone's memories, and all of the external harms to those around them. We don't believe any person can make that choice to destroy that, to kill somebody in that way. Um, no, thank you, not yet. We say there's an inherent value in, in, in human life that cannot be simply judged on behalf of one person, especially when the values that that person is fighting for can never be uh, as great as life itself, which I'll watch later. No, thank you. We think that any, soul, any person who thinks that being a soldier is in some way just, that they are fighting for something grander than their own lives, they cannot defeat that with the idea that life in itself is far more important, that the people on the other side of those trenches are singing, singing songs and playing football as well, that they are all people essentially in themselves. 
We think that the only moral thing to do is for a conscientious objector to, to refuse to fight, to refuse to be part of that killing and part of that pillage. Why is this then logically wrong though? This is kind of a 1.5 part of my point. We think that first of all, wars can't be fought well. Wars are an inherent institutionalization of a person, no thank you. They are actually about destroying your humanity like in a Voldemort Horcrux kind of way, <laughs> of splitting your soul up. It is about creating, not but a person, but a machine that can be ordered and can be utilized to act without hesitation. That he doesn't see a man, he sees a uniform. And even if that uniform isn't a person, but a, even a civilian, we have seen the growth of the idea that war can never be humane, that civilian casualties are, are, um, uh, are lessened. They use things such as collateral damage or, you know, tactical strike to describe what is essentially massive destruction and death. We think that wars inherently dehumanize people resulted in, in taking actions such as, you know, like the idea of pillage, the idea of rape, or even the idea, no thank you, of seeing your friends blown apart around you. We say that it's an inherently illogical position to ever put yourself into that place to ever let your humanity be crushed. Because should you even survive the war, you should not ever go into a place where you, you can't live your life after this. You have not just been indoctrinated into an order system. You no longer have a value to people's lives. You no longer have a system whereby you can judge people Sir, the same. I'll take closing. Right, so if I see a man murdering toddlers in a playground and I have a gun, should I shoot that man to end the slaughter? Um, I don't think so, no. Like, you might, you might object, you might say that I'm wrong, but you cannot ever say that a person should be forced into fighting. You present a situation where he has a gun and maybe your man doesn't, a certain tactical advantage. But even morally, when you put it this way, if I didn't have a gun, would it be right for me to risk my own life? Or even if I do have a gun, is it right for me to necessarily risk my own life? And even if that person is a murderer, why does that person deserve to die? Why, even for whatever actions he has committed, how can you justify that I, as God, can decide that he has sacrificed his life for his actions? I don't believe that can be justified. On to my sec second -ish point of the idea of the no duty to state. If they bring up to you the idea that you have a certain bond to your state, something that can't be broken, I say that's nonsense. I was born by accident in Ireland. I happen to be gloriously born in a neutral country that won't send me away. But thankfully, I would, in either way, I would never sign up to any of the ideas that my state perpetuates and tries to justify by the imposition of violence. We say that if you look Sir. at throughout, no thank you, look throughout history, all ideas <coughs> are transient. Democracy even itself, or our human rights, are not necessarily the absolute, not necessarily the supreme. To assume otherwise, to assume that they are stupid and they don't understand and they should suffer and their lives should go because of our ideas is a fallacy. We never truly know what the truth is. The only moral thing for me to do is to leave others damn well alone. To not decide that their lives are worth dying for for concepts that I have been tricked to believe in. We have seen throughout history that people have believed fervently in communism, fascism, and even democracy. There is no proof that these ideas are best, and to assume so is merely ignorance. There is no constant in this world but life. The only thing that we have ever seen go throughout our society is a mutual respect for life. The idea that we should not harm one another. We think that no state can ever say that an idea is worth fighting for in that respect. No state should ever even draft me and force me into that idea. No state should ever rob me of my liberty, rob me of my, my belief, and rob me of, and force me to kill. The very idea of an army, of being told what to do, and being no more than a machine, dehumanizes a person. And the only moral thing to do is maintain your humanity, maintain your belief that life is the only constant, and opt out of any war. I beg you to propose this motion. <laughs>